The refugees were walking in a city where they were looked down upon as an unwelcome crowd who would create many problems for the original residents. This city, which was the capital of their country, was just a few hundred miles away from their own lands, but they felt like outsiders here. They had to leave their lands because of sudden and unexpected floods caused by a big breach in the dikes. While walking on the concrete roads, these refugees did not look at anything although many things were quite new to them. They were too hungry and weak to take any active interest in new sights and sounds. They were provided shelter in large camps outside the new capital's city wall. The refugees would pour in large numbers and usually produced bitterness in city dwellers who would feel disgust at their sight. Their bitterness was caused by their fear that the presence of these hungry crowds will create many problems for them. This made them hostile and they would often shout rudely at many of the beggars. It also made people merciless in paying small fares to rickshaw pullers. Some of the refugees would pull rickshaw at a much cheaper price and this caused competition. Some would try their luck in every possible unskilled profession, while others would bend to begging. All this made the city dollars look down upon them as a big nuisance and tended to close their hearts to their suffering. These refugees had to face penury because of nat they were otherwise very proud and self-respecting people and felt ashamed of themselves when they were forced by their helpless condition to take resort to begging. They were tall and strong, wearing clothes made of dark blue cotton stuff. Their clothes were cut in an old-fashioned way and had long sleeves. Their coats were also long and full. The smocked apron of men had strange, complicated and yet beautiful designs, while women had bands on their heads wrapped like kerchief. Every man carried clean and well-made clothes and some bedding in two baskets, which hung from a pole across his shoulders. There were cooking utensils on each basket, but there was no sign of food being cooked in them. A close look at their faces showed that they were homeless, sad and had lost hope of surviving for long. But they bore their difficult situation with patience and courage. One of the refugees, the last one in the long procession, was an old man who had a wrinkled face and a weak body. Like other refugees, he also carried a lot of two baskets. One had a quilt with a cauldron on it, while the other had another quilt but no cooking utensils placed on it. He was tired and breathing heavily because the load was quite heavy for the old man. He stopped and after putting his load down, sat down to restore his strength. A passerby stopped by, felt pity and offered him a bit of money so that the old man could eat noodles and save himself from being starved. But the old man had his dignity and self-respect and did not put his hand out to receive the alms. He told the passerby that he was not a beggar and had fertile land at home. The passerby, without paying much attention, dropped the money into the old man's smocked apron and went away after making a sympathetic comment which also carried a tinge of dry humor. A vendor was selling noodles close by. He asked the old man whether he would like to buy a big or a small bowl of noodles. The old man saw the two coins and said that one small bowl would be sufficient for him. The vendor felt surprised at this preference for the small bowl even when the old man was very hungry. The vendor prepared a small bowl and after handling it over to the old man waited to see who would eat it. The old man, with great love and care, lifted up the little child's head and made him swallow the food. It was his grandson. After covering the little soul affectionately, the old man licked the little bowl and finished even the last trace of food on it. This was his only meal. 
When the old man returned the bowl to the vendor and ordered no more, he reminded the old man that he still had money to buy another bowl to save himself from starvation. But the old man refused to buy any more because he wanted to keep the rest of the money for buying seeds. He wished to return to his native land, sow seeds and grow crops on it. He gave more importance to his duty of raising new crops on his land than to removing his hunger by buying a bowl of noodles for himself with the silver coin he had with him. He added that he would not care for his own life in an attempt to make the life of his grandson better and happier. He picked up his load again and started walking again on his old and trembling legs. The old man's attitude shows the dignity and hope which can keep the peasantry going even in a most difficult and unbearably painful situation.